Hello guys and welcome to another video from Between the Ropes TV. Guys, guys, I'm going to talk to you about the big fight in Northern Ireland between Mick Conlon and Karim Griffey, uh, the Frenchman, 35 year old. Guys, it's a slow rebuild of Mick Conlon after his defeat against Lee Wood um, in a cracking fight, cracking fight. Um, definitely my, well, I won't spoil it uh, because of what we're doing later this year. That's for another video. But it was a great fight between Mick Conlon and Lee Wood. And um, in a way, Mick Conlon's stock went up in my estimation, after that fight, um, he put in a full performance. I kind of knew he had, but I hadn't seen. I knew he had that performance as an amateur, but as a professional, I hadn't seen Colin performed the way he did against Lee Wood. Lightning quick start. He boxed superbly, but he got unstuck. And we all know Lee Wood's got that equaliser, that power. Um if he hadn't succumbed to that shot, he would have won the fight in my eyes, and I think in many people's eyes as well. Um, he's back in Belfast. Uh, it'll be his second fight this year there. And Cameron Griffey, well, um, in my opinion, Cameron Griffey's no mug. He's been there with pretty much any, everyone between um, Bantamweight and, and Featherweight. In my opinion, his best work was at, was at Bantamweight. Um, he's getting older now, so as you guys know, in those lower weights, it's very, very difficult to hang about, isn't it, when you get into the your mid thirties? Um, he's, uh, I mean, I mean, what I like about him, he's had some. He, he had that barnstorm of a fight against Jordan Gill. There, uh, Jordan Gill stopped him um, in 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 a highly entertaining fight. Um, he also uh, was beaten by Lee McGregor. Um, that was down at that was down at bantamweight for the European. Um, but he, he's had some really good wins though. He he he, he beat Ryan Farag, um, you know the the scouser who was highly touted, um, and he, he had a couple of good wins against uh, Stefan Jamoy as well. Um, again, who who he was highly touted uh, at the time. So he, he's he's mixed it with real real good company. Um, Karim, uh, he, and, and I say it's slow because after Conlon's last win, I was expecting him to be back in the mix. It's not as if the performance against Lee Wood, um, it wasn't as if he, you know, he, he lost on a shutout or he was he was beaten beaten handedly on, um, you know, he was beaten handedly on the on the scorecards before he got brutally stopped. It wasn't any of that. He was actually winning the fight. So I would like to see him back in the mix sooner rather than later. Um, I think he gives, I think he causes someone like Mauricio Lara all sorts of problems with his skill, uh, his, you know, his technique. Um, he's so slippery, uh, slippery southpaw. He's, his footwork's incredible. He's in and out of range. Um, he uses the ring well. He's got good head movement. You can see how he causes nice sharp counters. You can see how he causes particularly slow-footed punches, all sorts of problems. I'm not seeing Lee Woods slow footed, but I definitely think Mauricio Lara is. So that's a winnable fight for me, for me, Conlon. Obviously, different platforms, different promoters, what have you. But, I mean, Kareem Gwerfi, okay, go back to Belfast and build that momentum again. But I want to see a big, big statement, yeah, next year for me, Conlon. Really, this is, this is the, this is the year for me. He's got to start fulfilling that, that potential. Um, I mean, the Mariago win his last win was a good win over 10 rounds, but I think we'll make his 31 now. So he's had his world title fight. He came up short, okay. Thrown back in there. Don't, you know, don't go around sort of like building them back up again slowly, slowly. I don't think, it, fair enough if he's 22, 23, but not when you're 31. Um, you run the risk of declining before you get another shot again. Uh, you know, okay, you don't want to have the Lee Wood fight, but Josh Warrington fights this weekend. Is that a fight he wants to make? You know, um, does he want to go in with? Because other, other than that, if you're not if you're not going in with a 
you you your belt holders, you run the risk of facing this sort of like a Gary Russell Jr. and Mark Maxayo, who are very difficult challengers and they don't have world titles. So for me, it's an opportunity for them to to kind of focus on the on the on the British scene. Um but yeah focusing back on Mick Conlon, plenty of talent in front of his home crowd. I'm expecting I would love to see a stoppage from him. I really, really would. I, th- I think if the if they're looking at building his confidence before they get him back to a world title, not that Mick Conlon's a shy retiring type, but this is the perfect opponent to get that stoppage win against. But I'm gonna go I'm gonna play it safe. I'm gonna go for a Conlon points win. Um but I think he's it'll be wide. It'll definitely be wide. Guys, let me know what you think of this fight. Do you think Mick Conlon should be thrown into a world title fight next? Do you think he's good enough? Uh, do you think he's the next best thing coming out of Northern Ireland? Um, or do you just think this is just a routine, uh, nice, comfortable win for him? Let us know what you think and drop your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.